Our next mama that's with us is Tamara. You're going to love her. Hi, Tamara. That's hello, me. hello. Excited to be here. That was amazing. Everything that she just said. What's her first name? Carrie? Carrie. Carrie. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I went over to get the freebie, which I already downloaded and saved to my desktop. And it is so vibrant. And it's like everything me because I am joyful and colorful and the rainbow is my jam. I truly want to reclaim what the secular world has taken as the rainbow and own mm. it as a Christian um, and that his promises reign true forever. So I, I emanate just with your color and your spear, spirit and your energy um, towards movement is I'm something I'm super passionate about as well. So we'll have to collab. Thanks for the introduction, Jess. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tamara is she. OK, for one, this woman, I think I picked everybody that ha that does a million things and is amazing and learns so much. She's another one of those. Her podcast legit is amazing. You need to go. She gets everybody that you would ever think about in the thought leader space and brings it in this faith based podcast. And I love that. She's a she has been she's also a pastor, a mama. She focuses on helping build your wealth from the inside out. I love that coin. I, I mean, I love that phrase that she says because it's just fantastic. And I, I know you're going to love her. That's, that's all I'm going to say. You're going to love it. So thank you, Tamara. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And I, and I'm excited to connect with everyone. So I know a lot of you guys are off camera, but I do love faces at any point. If you want to jump on, it's fun to connect, but I know people are listening and doing all the things because that's what we like to do. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to be here. Oh, I'm also going to throw this in there. She is like clubhouse master. If you want to a little bit more about Clubhouse. Tamara is your lady. If you totally. want, totally, I would love to help support. And then I actually have like, um, I have nine invites. So if anybody needs an invite and doesn't have an invite, shoot me your your message right now, and I'll give you an invite. Also, I have a couple of trainings um, that are just on YouTube, my YouTube channel. So if you want to be, if you're a newbie and you're like starting from scratch and ground zero, and you have no idea what it is, I can help you there. Or if you are ready to kind of utilize it for growth, whether it's for personal or professional growth, you can do it for speed speaking for authoring, authoring, is that a thing? Writing books, any of that, um, all the way into growing your business. And so I have a best practices video too. It's not a part of our freebies, but it's free because it's on my YouTube channel. So go whenever you want. I'm going to go pick that up because I'm still a newbie at, well, we're, a lot of us, we're all still newbies at oh, yeah. Clubhouse, but hey, she's mastered it. Believe me. It's so, been so I, really beautiful. Um, I want you to take us on a little bit of journey, if they don't know who Tamara is, like how did you come into this space of becoming a masterful coach, podcaster, incorporating faith-based into your coaching? As all of you guys remember from this morning, Yasmina has worked with Tamara, so we have a connection there as well. So take us on that journey. She was just in my office a couple minutes ago, hugging necks with me. It's so nice to see we share a co-working space. So I'm um, really awesome. But yeah, I mean, my journey, and I'm sure like everyone's has a crazy history. Um, I have actually walked through a lot of healing over the course of the last five years. Uh, I was not actually immersed in my faith as I am today. I was definitely not an ordained minister by any means. Um, far from it. In fact, uh, I was a... Uh, lukewarm Christian, if you will, somebody who maybe went to church on holidays um, and said that I believed in God or, oh, I'll pray for you when you're sick, but that prayer never actually manifested either in my mind or in my mouth. And so um, speaking to, to you all today, knowing that words like that and phrases like that, don't be lukewarm in that belief system. Make sure that you're actually a living testimony to the truth of what comes out of your mouth. Um, at a specific point of my life where I wasn't doing that, my husband was actually calling out of me the Jesus within me. Um, he kept calling me an integrous woman. He's like, I, I just love that you're a woman of integrity. Meanwhile, we were very dis disjointed. We were very disconnected in our marriage at this season. Um, I had a one and two year old at home who is now six and seven. So I'm literally giving you a timeline flashback of five years ago in my life. Um, and I was running two businesses. I had a global company uh, co-owned by somebody in Australia, and I was bringing a nursing bra line to the American market. Additionally, I had a local brick and mortar store right here in my neighborhood of Virginia Beach, Virginia, which was a college project that I brought to fruition a few years later alongside my mom. I was working about 60 to 70 hours a week, and I had just finished nursing. So imagine 
my body, my emotions, and also running a team of people who were in their 20, 21, 22 year old, and then after that into their 50s and 60s. So there was nobody in this middle spectrum of family raising, child rearing, um, any of that. They're either drinking beer or they were drinking beer. And beer at that <laughs> point was happy hour. Everything was a meeting happy hour. Everything was like, let's go do this after we would be grinding from sun up to sun down. My phone um, consisted of dinging uh, PayPal or dinging, this was before Venmo and Cash App were around. So I would getting alerts all the time and money was really fueling my mind. Um, it was fueling my actions and therefore mm -hmm. truly wasn't fueling my home um, abundance and prosperity. I didn't know what that meant. And yet my husband stood by my side and kept calling out of me this word of integrity. And it was like, it was just so painful at the time. Do you ever receive a compliment and it's like a dagger because you know that there's not trueness to it, that you feel like you aren't living up to that expectation and therefore you block um, the very thing that they're saying about you. It's almost like when someone's like, oh my gosh, you look amazing. And you're like, oh, I feel disgusting. First off, think about what you're saying over yourself in that moment. Secondly, think about the rejection that you've just given to the person who just went out of their way to compliment you, right? There's two sides to every story. And oftentimes we're so suppressed in our own emotions and our own belief systems and our own actions that we're not actually even willing to receive anything that anybody is giving us. And while my husband was actually saying that because he believed it partially, but because he also was seeing that I wasn't walking in integrity. So he was calling out of me the goodness. He was affirming something that I had yet to stand in. And it frustrated me so bad. And one day I pulled into my driveway and I saw my barely waddling nine month old. She walked super early. Um, mm. And instead of coming to me again, I had just finished nursing. She, after almost a nine hour work day, turned around and walked back towards my husband. And I remember just feeling in that moment, this is, this is not what I am supposed to be here for. This is not what I want, like what just happened. And in the same moment, you're a woman of integrity was circling in my mind because I was not acting in integrity with the person that I had intended to be, the person that I had prayed mm -hmm. to be, um, or even the person that I would want my little girl one day to mimic. Uh, not only because of where my priorities were, but because where my mind was and where my mind was not, where my heart was and where my heart was not. Um, and this was based off of you know generational bondage. And so there's this whole other conversation about why do we do the things that we do? What is the American dream? Is that truly something that you want? Or is that a stigma? Is that a consumer consumerism and marketing material that's been put in front of your face for so long that you don't really know what is happiness and what is success? And I didn't know what either of those things were, even though I was idealizing the American dream with my handsome, he's Gary Hot Hubby in my phone. And so Gary Hot Hubby, who everyone called us Barbie and Ken and my little boy and my little girl and our two great cars and our white picket fence of a home um, in a neighborhood with people who were 20 years older than us. So we were doing pretty good. And yet I was really broken inside. And so I had a choice and I call it a choice, a forced choice. Have you ever been in one of those situations where oh, yeah. you feel like you have no other option and yet the thing you really want to do is not the thing you have to do. And I love entrepreneurism. I love owning businesses. I love cultivating businesses because it's easy for me. And I don't say that in a robust, non-humble way. It's just a gift that I've been given. And it's a place and a space that I can hang out all day long and not feel overwhelmed by. But being a mom is hard. Being a wife is really hard. And being a mom and a wife, when my example of specifically wife and mom, not my own mom, she's amazing, but it wasn't always the right thing. And is it ever like I was definitely not emulating the Proverbs 31 woman. My mom wasn't rooted in the Bible. So there was none of that. We weren't really in our faith at all. Like I said, that lukewarm Christian experience. I said a prayer when I was little, but I never lived it out. And integrity was never truly exampled to me in the way that I want to example it for not only you, but for my children now. So this forced choice left me with no identity zero. I had no business card and I didn't know who I was. 
I was downcast in every conversation. I didn't make eye contact, especially if it was somebody from the opposite sex, where before I boldly could step into any conversation because I was the CEO. And people would ask me all the time, what do you do? And that identity of I'm just a stay at home mom. I don't really do anything. It literally just weighed on me so heavily. My son, my two-year-old would be wiping my tears at night. I wasn't able to even brush my teeth in the mirror for about 30 days because I wasn't a woman of integrity yet. But it was in my heart. It's in my passion for people and specifically women now to be full, to be aligned, to understand who they are. And so I went on a journey a deep journey during a pause of my own life that God actually showed up in my living room during this season. With It was been a, about a three week time frame of quitting these things, feeling completely broken, feeling completely found out and completely naked in everything that I was and everything that I thought that I was specifically because of therapy. And so if you've never been to therapy and you're like, that's not for me, I don't need that. I was that person. That's not for me. I don't need that. And the moment that I got on the receiving end of questions that I had never, ever asked myself, I started to dissect this person that wasn't standing in integrity. But I had every desire that my tombstone would not say CEO. My tombstone will say wife and mom and daughter and friend and sister and so that was my forced choice. And as I sat there, not forcibly, my husband allowed me to make this decision, but he yearned for that woman. And I saw that in his eyes and I wanted to rise to the occasion because I was achiever, because I was success driven, because I was a perfectionist. And if I wasn't a CEO, I had to be the perfect wife. I had to be the perfect mom. So I went on this journey and I started asking myself these questions and a couple of weeks in, I had uncovered something about myself that I had suppressed so deeply, I didn't even recognize by reading a book, by getting into somebody else's word, somebody else's mindset rather than my own, because sometimes we get so engrossed in our mind, we are unable to claw our way out and you're lost and you're living a life not in integrity not because you mean to, not because you're trying to be fake, not because you're trying to be greedy or success driven or a perfectionist, but because everybody has spoken all of those things over you and you don't know who you truly are when you look in the mirror. So the thing that I uncovered was that I had been sexually abused when I was around three to four years old. I remember sitting and physically seeing myself in this playground in the backyard of my childhood home and a child that had a mental handicap who was the figure of a man and yet unable to formulate conversation or words any much more beyond my own age, maybe seven. He was obsessed with the Three Stooges and he was shushing me because that's what the Three Stooges did. They would put their finger to your mouth. And it was the first time in my life that I was silenced and I have felt silenced many times since then. And those situations of him asking me to do something inappropriate became commonplace. That then later led to me playing hide and seek and finding pornography at the age of six. That then led to me stumbling into AOL dial up internet chat rooms and exploring conversations and language and parts of my body that I would never ever want my child to do at the age that I was. Thank God Snapchat wasn't around. Right, It's a, this exploration of identity that was being blanketed over me because of situations that were happening externally, but I was choosing, forcibly choosing. And yet I still yearn to be the bride in the white dress and the mom to the babies that I'd yet to meet or the husband that I'd yet to meet. And yet my life still spiraled out of control because when I brushed my teeth, I didn't actually look into my soul and I never asked myself those questions because I was ashamed. Mm -hmm. And so I've actually strategized this idea of an SOS model, which is really taking yourself. And if you know the SOS, it's the sign, the universal sign that you need help. 
And so the SOS strategy takes you through the acronym of shame and it helps you to uncover in the very sequence that I did how to get out of that situation, how to be able to be a woman of integrity and to release childhood traumas and to release the times of your life that you're no longer proud of. But you see, without those experiences, I wouldn't be here today. Without those experiences, I wouldn't be able to vulnerably and authentically show up to just share my heart and help other people release that and step into their purpose and their truest identity. That three week duration where I went from forcibly quitting the things that I thought would make me happy to asking myself the hard questions, to reading the book and uncovering this very secret part of my life that I had yet to ever face, to meeting the face of Jesus in my living room. I went from that downcast woman lacking integrity to him holding my face for the first time and me actually catching eyes to eye, the eyes to eyes, the bright light that he is. I'll never forget his face. I'll never forget that moment. There were people around me that witnessed this experience. And within an hour and a half, I was no longer that shameful woman. I had been able to be seen, known. And he said, I still love you. Mm. And being seen and being known and being loved is ultimately what we all want. Integrity is a byproduct of being seen, being known, and being loved. You claim your integrity and you claim your identity by being vulnerable, by waving the white flag, the SOS, and surrendering your heart to the thing that you ultimately desire to be. And so I went on a three-year journey and this three-year journey led me into my ordination and minister's licensing. It led me into understanding intimacy. It led me into years of both marital and personal therapy. It led me into a place that I was able to sit eye to eye with friends and men and women and have conversations proudly being a stay-at-home mom, being a wife, being a woman of integrity. And it also led me into conversations with friends to not just talk about the things that I was walking through, but to actually see them emerge into the things that they were passionate about. I got to dream again. I got to be with people again in the entrepreneurial setting and helping them to achieve the goals that they were purpose. And slowly but surely over the course of a few months, a girlfriend said, you should do this. And I was like, do what? And I knew I was yearning for something more than the specific life that I was living at that moment because I was constantly daydreaming. I was constantly learning. I was constantly immersed in a book or an idea or somebody else's idea. Mm. And finally, that moment was the, the light switch moment for me to say, I should do this. I should do this all the time because I love it, because I'm passionate about it, because the money doesn't matter, because I see purpose ignited in other people. I see wholeness established in other people. I see mind, body, and soul alignment happening with the spirit, with our father. And that unlock, that's the purpose. Because if we're vertically aligned, then we can finally horizontally give and we can exist in the mirror proudly and you can become that woman of integrity. And it doesn't take effort, it just takes time and obedience and discipline. And those things aren't effortful when your burden is light with mm. Jesus. When your pursuit of him is the one thing. And there's a book that I read called The One Thing in the Mist of My Downward Spiral. And people speak about it all the time. And I think about the places and the head spaces that I was when I read that. And I was thinking about all the wrong one things. And ultimately knowing five years fast forward that the one thing is just him. The one thing is just right now present with you guys to be able to share. And so that's how I am where I am. And I wanted to share the journey with so many people. I wanted to be able to be vulnerable and authentic and, and let people in on the secret life of Barbie and Ken. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what life is about. Not the falsehood of the American dream, not the picture perfect highlight reel, not the, you know, 
sit yeah. past any of the things. It's about mm-hmm. this. It's about it's about being real. It's about being authentic. It's about connection and it's about intimacy. Mm. Wow, Tamara, that is quite the background. I didn't know all of that. I don't know if all of you ladies knew that, but that's probably why she's, are you writing a book right now, Tamara? <laughs> yes. I okay. Yeah. I seriously, that was a book. Like you're, we're like, oh, what's the next page? Um, so good. Well, could, I knew that she was at a book retreat. So I just guess that, yep, she's probably in the midst of writing a book. I sure am. I actually just uh, finished it a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, I've been working on this book for three years. And if you have a desire to share your story in written format, I would highly encourage you to do it, but do it with no expectation of what that book's going to look like when it's complete or what the timeline will be, because God has a plan for everything. And I am a doer and success driven, right? And so I thought I'm going to go and I'm going to do this thing and it's going to be out in a year. Well, it's been three years in the making. I've had women on the journey with me in a private Facebook group the entire time. And they're probably like, oh my God, she's talking about that book again. But (laughs) I will tell you when I went just a few weeks ago, it was my my first time reading front to back. Um, I go on writing retreats because in motherhood, it's very hard to like, I'm not the person who can write for an hour and get into flow. I need like full dedication because it's very emotional to go through situations and talk about that. Um, So I need to be fully present. So I go on like two day um, writing retreats. And this was the first time I had read front to back and in edit format rather than just reading sporadically. And it was the very first time because usually I'm super emotional and I feel really depleted afterwards as I write through these things or edit them. It was the first time that I felt when I finished the last page that God said, it's time Ah. that you're ready. And it was less about, him and the story because the story was you know there but it was more about this seal of my healing has happened Mm -hmm. fully my marriage's healing has happened fully my children are in a beautiful place my family is in a beautiful place Mm -hmm. and in the midst of all of this brokenness that wasn't the case and so people will still see as your family is beautiful I'm like we fought for that beauty Mm -hmm. we fought for it so I'm excited for it to come out and um yeah thanks for asking Oh, I love that. That's so exciting. So exciting. I want you to speak a little bit more on the, that transition between CEO, stay at home mom and into what you're doing now. Yeah. That the space in between, so to speak, we know that song, but, um, how do you, how did you manage your mind? Because we know that all of it is about figuring out what's up here and what's down here. And then we put the pieces together. But, you know, the mom guilt that you went through, how did you get through that? How did you get through the shame that you felt of, you know, this and now this and you're tying that. So I want you to speak a little bit about that. Absolutely. So mindset is is really a a critical part, because like I said, your mind can run circles around your ideation of life. You're your ideation of this is what my life is supposed to be like. This is what happiness is supposed to be. And yet this is not where I am. And so let me daydream over here while I live this life over here. And you're completely segmented from reality. And that's the life that I lived. And because I was so segmented, I had no sense of truth. Even little white lies that were told in this place I I didn't know that I was lying, but little white lies establish a really grandiose sense of lie. That's why I couldn't look myself in the mirror. So mindset was where I had to focus when I was sitting on the couch with a therapist. And I had to go back to the root cause of all of these different areas of belief systems. And that's a hard thing to do. It actually jolts your family structure. For me, your circle is so important and you hear this all the time. You are the culmination of the five people closest to you, right? And I was really, really close to my family. We were very much enmeshed. And I always thought that that was a great thing. I never did what the Bible says to leave and cleave to your spouse. I lived in the same neighborhood as my parents. Um, We were 17 houses down. Uh, The way that my mom parented was the way that I parented. And I asked her opinion before I ever asked my husband's opinion. And I lived a life that was basically exactly like my mom was living. And come to find out God had way more for me. 
God has way more for her. And she's just coming into that belief system and that knowing, which is so beautiful, but it was very hard. So I actually had to shed my inner circle. I had to exist in my nucleus. That nucleus was my husband and my children and my therapist and my God. And I had to explore for almost a year. And that's when I did the worship school for a year. And I was just literally in the word. I was, I'm not a worship, I'm a worshiper. I do not sing or da I dance, I love dancing. I do not sing and I do not play an instrument yet. Let's say yet, yes. uh, because that's weak language otherwise. But I, I just needed to understand intimacy. And so intimacy with myself was first and foremost, and that's the headspace. So I'm going to give you two different resources. I highly recommend if you feel like you circle in your brain all day long. The first is Detox by Ron Carpenter Jr. Detox, it's all about detoxing your mind. And the second one is, um, uh, I'm sorry, Detox is another one. That's another one. That's a really good one too. Sorry, Mind World by Ron Carpenter Jr. And the other one is Crash the Chatterbox by Stephen Furnett. Both of these are like six to seven part sermon series and they have video and all of that. And they are phenomenal. Crash the Chatterbox was actually turned into a book as well. So you can get that on Audible. But it teaches you through the Bible, through the lens of Jesus, how to control your mind and how there's an enemy spiritual warfare happening all the time over our mind. So when people say not today, say, and I say that often, and it's because it'll get in here and your mind will take you away into that segmented, fragmented sense of reality when God has your truest identity over here aligned with him. So that was mom, mind, mom, holy moly. So I, I definitely sensed mom guilt. I sensed mom guilt when I pulled into that driveway when my nine month old waddled away from me. I sensed mom guilt when I was in the midst of motherhood full time and I felt like I wasn't living up to my own expectations. I wasn't living up to the Pinterest mom. I wasn't living up to the Instagram reels. We looked really put together when we were on the outside, but I felt so broken. I felt like I was never fully present with them. Here I am, my two-year-old wiping my tears because I wasn't sure who I was. So I could never exist as just a mom. And I say this often to my husband. I'm like, it'd be so nice to just have a baby again. A baby that when I'm in my faith, when like I get to pray over that womb, I never did those mm -hmm. things. I never had that opportunity. And, and so I, I yearn for that, but at the same time, right now, our family unit is complete and we're tossing internally and only God knows the answer to that, but it's still possible. Anything is possible with my God. So knowing this, I always had this sense of mom guilt. And then here I am about three years in when I was going to these coffee dates and I had this yearning for something more. I actually put them into daycare over the course of that time, just for like two to three hours a day, a couple times a week. One, and I said it was for their growth, right? They need interaction with other kids because they used to be in a daycare literally all day long, my mom's daycare, in fact, um, when I was at work. And so I was like, they need interaction, but really I just needed sanity. I needed to go to the grocery store by myself. I needed to clean my house by myself. I needed to sit with my emotions by myself. I needed to go to therapy by myself. I needed to go to the gym by myself. And there's no reason that you can't do that because if you are not existing from a place of overflow, you're existing from a place of overwhelm. And then when you're with your children, the first thing that happens is you snap. Yeah. You say the wrong thing. Then you find yourself either feeling guilty about it later because you did the wrong thing, said the wrong thing, weren't present, weren't fully with them, not making eye contact on this dang thing all the time, living in a fragmented, non-real world. And so as a mom, my heart for women, my heart for women so deeply is for them to understand that alignment and that importance of alignment. There's so often women and Carrie's one of them like existing in this beautiful place of, of physicality and they got that part right. And then sometimes there's women who are living in like, I am mentally sound, my aura, I meditate, I manifest, right? Love them yeah. too, they're awesome. But then the woo woo, the crunchy mom, right? And then there's the spiritual mom who's like, I go to church every day. I know every hymn. I, I literally, my kids are in church every day. That's cool too. However, what's happening is you're fragmenting your sense mm. of self and you're saying that you're really strong here, but this is okay. You're really strong here, but this is okay. And what's happening is you're actually depleting your full sense of self. Our body is our vessel. 
Our mind, spirit, will, emotions, our soul belongs to our heavenly father when you're in a state of redemption. And then our spirit man is the person who precedes us into every room. Our energy, if you will. And if all of these things aren't synchronous, there's something that's is falling to the wayside. And everyone talks about balance, right? The work-life balance as a mom, mom guilt and work-life balance are the two like phrased conversation. Well, balance is a lie. I believe yeah. balance is a lie. And the truth in that is alignment. Because if you think about alignment, if something gets out of alignment, you don't stop everything and the wheels are done and you give up on life. You come back into that recognition, you work on that, and then everything comes back into that upward motion. Balance is here, balance is here, and then you're done. You gotta get back. I was a gymnast for 16 years. So when I say balance is a lie, that's not true because balance beam was my favorite. Yeah. But if I fell, I fell off. And it was over. I lost the I lost the 9.0. I lost the 10.0. But that's not real life. If you are physically not well, that's okay. Let's let's focus on that while also nurturing the other pieces. If you're mentally out of whack, let's focus on that. Mental health is so important. Postpartum was something I dealt with. So mom guilt and postpartum is such a big thing. Mm. And then if you have this yearning for something more, if you know that your purpose for something greater, your children are great, but they're not your only why. They're not, because they're gonna grow up, they're gonna go off and they're gonna find their why or their who. And while they're gonna love you forever and you're a part of their story, you're not their only story either. And so my heart for women is to find that sense of alignment so that when you get to horizontally give, when you get to horizontally be with the ones that you love, you're doing so out of that place of overwhelm and you're doing so out of this exchange of freely giving. Let me give you the thing that I'm overflowing with, right? Let me give you this treasure of mine rather than pull, pull, pull. And at the end of the day, you have nothing left. Yep. That's why we're guilty. That's why we have that sense of shame. One, the shame has to be released through that process of SOS. It's called the shame omission strategy. And then from there, you get to exist in that place of joy. You get to exist in that place of purpose and you get to exist in that place of integrity. Awesome, awesome. This flows perfectly because I want you to talk about what you're giving away. Um, and before that, mamas, if you have out, have any questions for Tamara about mom guilt, about shame, about calling out, put them in the chat. She wants to be able to answer them. So tell them about this um, course that you've, you're giving away in the chat. Yes. Okay. So the Roots and Wings course is a six week, five module program and training. It basically takes you through the process that I did the year before I established my business. And I started bringing people into the membership. I talk you through some of the mental health pieces that I walk through. I talk you through how do you align your past self through a journey mapping process of pain and passion how do you align that into the place of transformation that then serves everyone that you come into alignment with? You have these ideas that are maybe running, running through your mind, but you don't know how to correlate them into service. It also is going to break down money stories and your mindset towards money. Because often, especially as a mom or perhaps somebody who's in ministry, you feel like you are not worthy of an exchange of money and you're supposed to just give of your time. Yes. Give of your time, mm -hmm. give of your talents and your gifts and do so without greed. However, we serve a prosperous God and he wants your family to be taken care of just as much as you want to take care of them. So it's an amazing opportunity to embed yourself into all of that mind work, that heart work and that mental space to develop your professional self. Um, and this is for people who aren't just entrepreneurs, even if you work in the corporate setting, if you're a teacher, this really speaks into your purpose. And that's my heart is to activate purpose within women through alignment. Mm, this, I looked at the course earlier. Was it last night or this morning? I was like, okay, I've got to, I want to see what Tamara's giving away. It is chock full of goodness. People, you'll go, oh, I can take this nugget today and this nugget 
and really embrace into that because Tamara is really into pouring into you so that you can live out your potential. And when we live out our potential as mothers, we all know everybody benefits. And that's why, let's be honest, you want to have a better life because you want your kids to have a better life. You want to have a better relationship with your spouse. And it starts with you. You have to take care of yourself and your relationships with others, your relationships with Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, having the spirit with you. All of these things are so important. And Tamara has this awesome, awesome tool to help you do that. So click below on the link and make sure you sign up for it and get it because it's good. Yes, please. I look forward to interacting with you guys. It's in a network portal. So it's not any course that you never get to talk to me. I'm in there all the time. So if you have questions, I'm happy to answer. Or if you want to work through one of your projects or programs that you're on, let me know. I'd love to chat. Excellent. Tamara, where can they find your podcast? Where can they find you, your website, your courses? So, so Tamara Andrus says everything is under my name. I, I corrected whoever is in tech support right now. Um, because everyone spells my name wrong and it's totally fine. I just got the boring version. My mom actually named me from the Price is Right a week before I was born. So oh. Tamara, like a camera, but without the E, okay? Tamara Andres, I'm mostly on Instagram. You can find me on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. I have a Facebook group on um, Facebook, obviously. It's called the Christian Entrepreneurs Who Make Kingdom Impact. So if you want to hang out with me there, I'm there live a lot. Um, but the Fit and Faith podcast is where the journey all started. Uh, and I am on there that uploads weekly with different people, movers, shakers, entrepreneurs, moms, men, everyone who come to the table to share their own messy comeback stories to our versions of success, which are all different um, and ultimately making kingdom impact. Um, I, my website is tamaraandress.com. And one of my favorite things that I do is bring women on retreats. It's a full realignment and a reestablishment and opportunity to get outside mm -hmm. of the mom guilt because you have them all taken care of and I take care of everything else from there. Uh, our next trip is to Costa Rica in February of next year and we just got back from Tulum, Mexico. So it's been amazing to see transformation that has continued since we've been back just from that week experience. So I'd love to have you there as well. I've got memberships and coaching and all that jazz too, but ultimately just come out and hang out in all my free spaces and then you won't want to leave. Oh, I love that. I love that. Oh, okay. Oh, Audrey, how do we join for free? Well, I'll let Tamara talk about that. Yeah. So lots of ways. So um, if you click on this link, it should go, let me make sure that you've got the right link here. It should go right into the core creatives portal which is a free network. Yep, you just access it right there. That gets you into the back end area for free. It went to a paid option. Hmm. When I'm clicking on it, it's saying free and then you access and then free and confirm free access. That's at least what I see. So if not- It's the same on mine. It shows like payment and then it says free. So oh, maybe okay. it might be why it's confusing. Okay, so it is free. So make sure you go for it. And if it's not, Jessica reach out, reach out to me and I'll-, I'll make yeah. sure that it's free. Otherwise I have um, my free Facebook group. As I mentioned, I'll send that link to you guys here right now. Yes. So you can pop in there and hang out with us too. Um, what other questions, any other thoughts, ideas, confusion points perhaps that I can clarify? <laughs> I love that. a lot of information I know. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks for being here, being an active listener. Do you mind if I pray? Oh, you can. You can. Right, great. Yeah. God, we just thank you so much for this time. We thank you that you are intentional in the people who are here right now in this moment and the people who will listen later, God, that you have a heart for them, that you want them to know that they are fully seen and fully known and fully loved by you. God, that this time together is just so anointed that we just pray ultimate blessings over Jessica for her bringing together this conference, this concept, this summit. God, enjoy, you know, runs over my cup. And so God, I just thank you for the opportunity to share that. And I thank you that we get to intimately know and connect with you every single day so that we can serve the little ones that we love, the big ones that we love and all the people that we've yet to meet. So God, just continue to steward their hearts and their minds and their souls and their spirits as they walk this crazy life out. And they know ultimately that their purpose is already proven in you. It's not external, Lord, but it's internal. And we thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, on the cross just for us so that we could have that intimate connection with him. 
We thank you for this time and we thank you for this space and we thank you for the connection even through the Zoom world that we live in right now. And we give it all to you in your glorious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Tamara. This has been fabulous. Please go follow her, get the links. And I am so glad that we're able to connect through this Zoom world. Me so. too, me too. Bye you all. Bye Thank everybody. You so